animals help your village in a lot of ways. But there's so much to these fluffy blessings that they can overwhelm you with questions. I did the research needed to understand how every system works to answer these and a lot more. A lot of what I discovered isn't mentioned in game and isn't covered in other guides or videos. Don't worry if you're still a beginner player though. I'm going to be both explaining the basics and elucidating these unclear systems for more experienced players. I put all the stats I use in this video in a Google Sheet linked in the description. This grew from the one that the user Caridwin started on the official Going Medieval Discord. Before you get into any of their uses, you need to actually have animals. While you can ultimately access any species on any map, only a few will naturally spawn as wildlife. These are wolves, deer, rats, rabbits, and boars. Mountain maps also have goats. These wild animals wander around eating plants, corpses, and any food you leave out that they have access to. This can make it fairly easy to lure them by building an enclosure of fences somewhere that is not doored off, dropping a stockpile of what they eat, and being ready to build a wicker gate when they come running in. You can temporarily make a hole in your walls to get them to run all the way into your settlement if you want. Other species will occasionally appear as random events that spawn one or more of them. You'll get these approximately twice a year, so if you want one specific animal, you're going to be waiting a while if you don't start out with it. Keep in mind that you might only get one animal, or that you might end up with two males instead of a breeding pair. These may arrive already domesticated, but they can also arrive as wild animals that behave just like the map's natural wildlife. Regardless of their source, wild animals can be hunted down or tamed. Taming is an animal husbandry job in which a settler will seek out the specified animal to attempt to domesticate them. You have a base chance of success that's influenced by the animal's type and age, with younger animals being slightly easier to tame. That base chance is then affected by a multiplier based on the settler's skill. A settler with a skill of 25 is almost twice as good as one with a skill of 10, who is themselves twice as good as someone with a skill of 0. Upon failing, some animals may retaliate. They'll chase and attack settlers for a short distance. Watch any settlers you send out to tame animals that retaliate often. When a taming attempt succeeds, the animal's tame stat increases by a fixed percent determined only by the type of animal. Handler skill does not play a role in this. Once an animal is 100% tamed, it becomes permanently domesticated. That tamed percent constantly and slowly decreases. It goes down by about a third of whatever it would increase by on a success per day, regardless of if any further taming is a success, failure, or happened at all. Each animal will only allow one taming attempt per 24 hours. This means that you should have your best handler train animals as soon as possible. Make sure animal handling is their highest priority, or it'll drastically slow down animal taming. It's back to nerd stats for 15 seconds. We can calculate how long it'll take to tame animals on average using something called expected value. If you have a 50% chance to succeed and gain 15%, and a 50% chance to fail and gain zero, that averages out to a gain of 7.5% per day. Subtract the 5% decay from that, and you're left with a total expected value of 2.5% per day and an animal that takes 40 days to tame. All right, nerd stuff over. What's that all mean? Cows, goats, chickens, and dogs can easily be tamed in a few days, even with a relatively low skill in the mid-teens. Deer and sheep are harder to tame and will take even skilled colonists most of a season. Some animals, notably boars and foxes, will take even colonists with a perfect skill of 50 entire seasons. These are almost entirely a vanity project and aren't very useful. These tamed animals, with the notable exceptions of dogs and a couple others you'll rarely want to tame, can be put in a pen. That's an enclosure made of walls, fences, and cliff faces with a wicker gate or barn door leading in and out. It will also need a pin marker inside, which you can then select and choose which animals are allowed to be stored there. Domestic animals will be roped in and won't be able to leave, so make sure your pen has access to food. A couple trows with hay or animal feed will do, but you can also use a stockpile to give them these. They won't eat cooked meals, and no animals you can pin will eat meat or corpses. Although you about double the amount of nutrients made when using animal feed instead of raw hay and vegetables, not all animals can take advantage of this. Use feed for most, but chickens and hares have such small stomachs that they'll waste most of the food, and should instead be fed hay. Certain species of domestic animals can be harvested for goods. Female cows, goats, and sheep give milk, all sheep give wool, and female chickens will lay eggs in the morning without needing to be harvested for them. Milk and eggs are ready every 28-ish hours, while wool takes about 4 days. Either way, keep these animals in a pen close to your settlement so that you don't spend ages running to harvest them and then hauling the goods back. Female animals will actually produce more food like this than you'll use feeding them. Males, not so much. However, males still are very useful because animals can breed. It'll help to pen them together, but it isn't necessary. Life finds a way. 
Every hour, a mature female with a mature male within 10 tiles has a 10% chance to become pregnant. The stat min time to breed determines how many days it'll take for them to actually give birth. Most animals take half to a full season for this before spawning one or two offspring. You will need to make sure that your pens are large enough to maximize how quickly they can do this. Animals have a stat called min grid space, and this refers to the number of tiles each animal needs in a pen to breed properly. Cows have a min grid space of four, so a pen with 40 tiles will let nine cows Cows breed at full speed. Having 10 cows inside will drastically reduce this by what seems to be about 90%. Hey you, you see this happy cow family, right? You're gonna scroll down to like this video and subscribe to me or else I'm deleting this trow and letting them fight over the last food they'll ever get. Can you handle their blood being on your hands? In addition to being harvested for goods or breeding, domesticated animals can be further trained into pets. This system works very similarly to taming them, although it does take a lot longer. A settler with a skill of 20 will domesticate a goat in 3 or 4 days, but take 5 times that long to go from domestic to pet, and they're one of the easiest animals to train. Dogs, cows, and goats are the only thing worth trying to do this to until your animal handler has a skill in the high 30s. All other animals are going to either take you years, or they're fairly useless once trained. Foxes are definitely the worst offender. They don't do any work or provide you with any help, but they're incredibly difficult to train. They're more of a status symbol than anything else. Note that any pets that breed will have offspring that are largely or entirely tame. A newborn with one parent that's a pet and one that's only domesticated seems to only need one taming to themselves become a pet. Pets gain opposable thumbs that stop doors from constraining them. They'll leave their pens to wander around your village or follow someone that they're assigned to. They'll eat what they want, including growing crops, without anything you can practically do about it. That's the price you pay for keeping them as pets. But some are incredibly useful. They can haul or help your villagers fight off raids. You'll need to assign them to do this in the Domesticated Animals tab. Haulers will occasionally run to goods in the floor to take them where they need to go. Don't ask me how they know where that is. All of the animals that can do this seem to move at the same speed and choose when they'll haul versus wander around at random, so I don't think there's a difference. This might make cows seem like the most attractive hauler, since they have the highest storage and can carry the most at once. But this doesn't matter all the time, and cows both breed more slowly and eat more food to counterbalance this. That said, because you're often relying on lucky events to get these animals, go with whatever you actually get your hands on. In addition to hauling, pets can fight, but they're not so good there. They have a good chance to dodge, but their accuracy and damage is well below what a regular colonist would do. Their lack of armor means that they also die very easily, often in one or two hits. Although boars can take a couple more. Even if an animal survives but is wounded, you can't actually give them first aid to save them like you could with a regular colonist. Add to that that you can't control them very well, that they charge in, and, well, it can be fun, but don't get too attached to any animals you let fight. Last, some random facts that didn't really fit in anywhere else. Calling excess animals is a decent way to get passive food and leather. Young animals give the same amount of meat and leather as mature ones, so call them early on to save on animal feed. If you don't mind getting on PETA's bad side, you can use these excess animals that you're going to cull as ranged combat training. Keep a pen on the high ground and have settlers shoot at the animals that are in cover. Their high dodge chance, the low ground penalty, and the cover that Merlons offer will ensure that these animals live for a decent while. If you like this deep dive, I've done similar ones on other systems like combat and answered other common questions you've probably had at some point. Make sure to check them out.